up guys, my name is Luke and welcome back to Motion and Design. So I've been messing around uh, quite a bit with the cloth engine, oh, the Cinema 4D R23, or 2023 I guess. And yeah, I've been just trying to make some kind of like abstract art and what you saw in the beginning is one of the examples that I made. And so I thought I'd kind of break down and show you guys how I created that. Uh, but before we start, I just want to say thanks to all the recent subscribers and Patreon. If you want to support the channel and like and subscribe goes a long way. Uh, if you're looking for a little bit more uh, and you want to support the channel even more, my Patreon is in the, uh, in the description. Uh, you can get access to all my project files and some other exclusive content on there. But yeah, let's get straight into the video. Uh, yeah, I just want to sorry for the voice. I am a little bit sick. Uh, yeah, let's get straight into this. Cool, let's start off over here by just putting in a plane. Let's make it like 300 by 800. Just kind of something thin like that. Let's go ND so we can see our uh, polygons over here. Let's maybe increase this to like 200 by uh, 60 maybe. Something like that. Yeah, we kind of want squares. Uh, it doesn't need to be squares. You'll see that uh, with the workflow that we're going to be doing, it's going to be quite a procedural workflow. So you might have a bit of luck actually just having it as like weird things like this. Uh, I'll show you why in a second. Cool, and now with the plate selected, let's go over here and search for an extrude. You can see I've already searched it, but just type in over here, extrude. And let's grab this and let's drop this under our plane over here. And now you see that it extrudes the plane. Uh, it leaves gaps underneath, but for what we're doing, this is actually perfect. If you don't want that, just click on use island and we'll get rid of it. Uh, sorry, not use islands. Uh, is a create caps over here and then it will get rid of that the use island gets rid of every single one of these um, blocks over here instead it will just be one big extrude but that's not what we want we want it like this cool let's make the offsets around three centimeters something like that should be perfect cool so this is the base geometry that we're going to have and obviously over here we can decrease this or increase this depending on the look that you're going for um, so you'll see that they're just kind of squares for now, but if we had to throw this into a subdivision surface, you'll see now they become, let me just hide this, now they become these little, like, bumps, which is what I was looking for. And yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. So obviously with this, I mean, you can change this to that and it'll get different variations, uh, so you can kind of change this up quite easily. You can even animate this if you're wanting to, uh, depending on the look that you're going for. Cool. So with that, let's turn off our subdivision for now because we're going to add a simulation tag and we're going to go to simulation tags and plot. Uh, before we do anything, if you had to press play now, it's just going to fall down. Uh, let's go to here and to simulation, scene and turn off gravity. Cool. So we don't want it to just kind of fall. Let's add some turbulence. Let's go over here to turbulence. Let's increase the scale to maybe around like 20 something and the scale to about like 70. Uh, so yeah, I mean the strength is kind of self-explanatory and scale is the scale of the noise. So the smaller this is, the more micro details in the noise there will be, but then the bigger it is, the more bigger the uh, like the turbulence will be. So depending on your look, I'll kind of change that around. So let's see what that looks like if we had to press play. Right, so we're getting a lot of movements uh, a lot of detail, but we are getting, in my opinion, way too much movement. I don't want this too much, this much movement. So what we can do to fix that is if we go over here into the forces, we can add a friction tab. And that's pretty much like the equivalent of the drag modifier inside of X particles. It just kind of uh, slows everything down. So for my render, I had it at about 500. Let's see what that looks like. So now we're getting a lot of movement, but it's not as much movement. It's a little bit more slow, a little bit more subtle, which is what I wanted. Uh, yeah, depending on your look, obviously, you can remove the drag, increase it, decrease it to get the look that you're going for. Okay, another thing that I added was a rotator. You obviously don't need to do this. Uh, I just wanted it so that it had just a little bit more movement. Uh, so how the rotator works is it rotates around the z-axis, so whichever way the blue arrow is pointing, that's the direction of which it's going to rotate. So I'm just going to do something like, something like that, just so it's kind of going at an angle. Now it will rotate around this blue axis over here. Uh, 
complex and how we're getting it where it kind of scrunches up and kind of goes in an angle, which is exactly what I was looking for. I thought this looks really nice. And now when we throw the subdivision surface, I mean, this looks cool by itself if you're going for like more of a geometric look, but just by turning on the subdivision, we get this weird like kind of organic -y look. So this looks really cool uh, if you're going for, I mean, this kind of looks like a certain type of fabric, but I wanted it to be a little bit more weirder. So how we can do that is in our cloth tag over here, we can leave everything the same. Let's just increase the target length to 200. Now let's see what that does. Now this looks really weird and it looks like, oh no, we made a mistake and this does not look good. But let's just give it a little bit more time to simulate. And now when we throw the subdivision surface on, let me get this really weird, like organic -y looking look. And this is exactly what I was going for. I think that looks really nice. I know it kind of looks like a bunch of clams. But yeah, it's weird. It's wonderful. I dig it. Uh, let's just give it a little bit more time to simulate up here. And then let's jump into the texturing. Cool. That should be good. Because now we get these kind of weird, uh, uneven, like, I mean, some of these you'll see are a little more stretched out than others. And I really like that look because it looked really like weird and organic. So how we're going to go about texturing this is a really simple texture. Let's just change it to path tracing so that light can actually go through it with the method that we're doing. We need light to pass through. Let's take our specular material, put it on our object over here. I mean, that already looks cool, but <laughs> not what we're going for. Let's increase the roughness by a bit. So that not as much light passes through. Then over here in the medium, let's add a rand walk. We're now going to go over here, search, and we're going to search for a octane gradient and a dirt node. Let's so, throw the dirt into the gradient over here and then the gradient into the albedo. And I think the colors that I used in my render was something along the lines of like a light blue and a yellow something like that um it the yellow kind of came off a lot more orangey in the render but i think that's because of the lighting that i used so let's go like that and then let's increase this so something like that it gives us really weird nice organic -y look to it i think i'll just bring this up by the tad um you can mess around with the density over here depending on the look that you're going for uh, the lower the density, the more light that's going to kind of pass through it. So I think we don't need too much, so something like that should be fine. And now if we had to go and throw in a light over here, just bring this off to the side, so like that, and then add a HDRI gradient, or just HDRI, just a plain back one. We get this really nice looking, very contrasty. I'm not going to go into how I did the lighting. The lighting setup, I think I only used like kind of two, it was two or three lights, just kind of highlighting certain features that I wanted to highlight, and then just kind of some basic camera movements. But yeah, that is the gist of this tutorial. This is very easily uh, procedural. I mean, we can obviously change the colors over here. Uh, let me just change this. We can go back here because it's procedural. We can now change this to like that. Press play again. I mean, that also looks really cool. Throw it on the subdivision surface. And now you get another weird look to it. So yeah, I would recommend recommend messing around with this. You can throw on some like other deformers and nodes over here. Uh, yeah, with this latest update of Cinema 4D, it's made things very procedural, which has made it a really nice workflow. Uh, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please consider giving it a like and a subscribe. And yeah, if you want to support the channel and get access to the project files, my Patreon is in the link in the bio. But yeah, I hope you have a great one and I'll see you guys next week. Peace.